Is Ohio State in trouble as a program? No, they're going to remain being one of the best teams in the country. But do I think Ryan Day's seat is getting a little warm after back-to-back -back disappointing season endings? Yes. And do I think pressure is mounting going into the 2023 season? Yes. But why? Especially because they are a team that has gone to three of the last four college football playoffs and played in a national title game in 2020. Well, to answer that question, we need to go and look back at the history of Ohio State, understand the expectations for this program, and talk about what matters to the fans to answer the question on why Ryan Day may be on the hot seat. You won't want to miss this one. Ohio State began playing football May 3rd, 1890. That day, players woke up before sunrise, got on their horse and buggies, and took the 20 plus mile journey on unpaved roads to a field on the side of the Delaware Creek at Ohio Wesleyan University. The Buckeyes would go on to win that game 20 to 14 in front of 700 fans. During this game, the play had to be halted several times to retrieve the ball from the waters of the Delaware Creek after errant kicks. They played their first home game at Recreation Park in the German Village area coached by Alexander Lilly. Lilly was known for riding an Indian pony to practice. They would lose their home opener to Wooster 64 to nothing and they would go on to lose all three games that fall. In 1894, they would play a game at the Ohio State Fair and were invited to play a game for presidential candidate William McKinley during a campaign event in Canton in 1896. They began playing the team up north in 1897, losing 34 to nothing in the first matchup. This was a low point for the program as they finished that season going 1-7-1. In 1899, they hired John Eckstorm to bring in a professional coaching skill environment and went on to win their first conference championship. After a player was fatally injured in 1901, there were questions on whether Ohio State would continue its football program. Although the university chose to keep the program, X Storm decided to resign as head coach. Chick Harley was viewed as one of the greatest Ohio high school players ever. Harley quickly became a fan favorite and helped lead the Buckeyes to their first ever Big Ten title in 1916. They would repeat in 1917, and in Harley's career, the Buckeyes finished 22-1-1. Because of the crowds Harley brought, Ohio State needed to open Ohio Stadium in 1922, which had been built off entirely fan donations. The stadium hosted 72,500 fans in its inaugural game. Francis Smith ushered in Ohio State's move to the big time in 1934. In his years as head coach, he shut out the team up north four times. On October 10, 1936, the Ohio State marching band first performed their script Ohio during halftime against Pittsburgh. The Buckeyes hired Paul Brown in 1941 after he led Massillon Washington High School to six straight state championships. Brown immediately changed Ohio State's style of offense, planned and organized the program in great detail, and delegated to his assistant coaches using highly structured practices. In 1942, Ohio State saw 22 veteran players leave for military service, but still went on to win their first national championship. In 1944, Brown accepted a commission into the United States Navy, ending his coaching career. Throughout the remainder of the 40s, the program was in major flux. While they found some success, they also became known as a graveyard of coaches. Enter Woody Hayes. The Woody Hayes era at Ohio State was a period of great success and influence for the Buckeyes football program. Hayes was the head coach of Ohio State from 1951 to 1978 and led his teams to a 205-61-10 record, including five national championships and 13 Big Ten Conference titles, eight Rose Bowl appearances, and coached 56 first-team All-Americans, three Heisman Trophy winners, and three Outland Trophy recipients. Hayes was known for his fiery personality and his passion for military history and his devotion to the education and self-reliance. He also had a fierce rivalry with Michigan coach Bo Schembechler, who was his former player and assistant. The Woody Hayes era ended in controversy when he punched a Clemson player in the 1978 Gator Bowl and was fired the next day. However, his legacy lives on in many of his players and coaches he influenced, as well as in the Ohio State football tradition. The Earl Bruce era at Ohio State was a period of continuity and competitiveness for the Buckeyes football program. Bruce was the head coach of Ohio State from 1979 to 1987, succeeding his mentor Woody Hayes. He led his team to an 81-26-1 record, including four Big Ten championships and five bowl wins. He also coached nine first-team All-Americans, including Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin's brother, Ray Griffin. Bruce was known for his fiery personality, his loyalty to Ohio State, and his respect for the Michigan rivalry. 
He also had a knack for upsetting highly ranked teams such as number one Iowa in 1985 and number two Michigan in 1987. The Earl Bruce era ended abruptly when he was fired by Ohio State President Edward Jennings before the final game in the 1987 season, a decision that was unpopular with many fans and players. However, Bruce coached in his last game against the team up north with a rose in his mouth and was carried off the field by the team after a 23-20 win. His legacy lives on in Ohio State football tradition, and his coaching tree includes Urban Meyer, Jim Trestle, and Nick Saban. The John Cooper era at Ohio State was a period of mixed emotions and results for the Buckeyes football program. Cooper was the head coach of Ohio State from 1988 to 2000, succeeding Bruce. He led his team to an 111-43-4 record, including three Big Ten championships and three bowl wins. He also coached 22 first-team All-Americans, including Heisman Trophy winner Eddie George and Lombardi winner Orlando Pace. Cooper was known for his recruiting prowess, his offensive innovation, and his success against ranked opponents. He also had a knack for losing to Michigan and in bowl games, which led to a lot of anger from many fans and alumni. The John Cooper era ended after a disappointing 7-5 season in 2000, which included a 38-26 loss to the team up north and a 24-7 loss to South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. His legacy is complicated by the fact that he had some of the most talented teams in Ohio State history, but failed to win a national championship or beat the team up north consistently. However, he also laid the foundation for the future success of the Ohio State football program under Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer. Trestle was the head coach of Ohio State from 2001 to 2010, succeeding Cooper. He led his team to a 106-22 record, including 7 Big Ten championships and 5 bowl wins. He also coached 18 first-team All-Americans, including Heisman Trophy winner Troy Smith and Lombardi winner A.J. Hawk. Trussell was known for his sweater vest, his conservative play calling, and his success against the team up north and in big games. He also led Ohio State to its first national championship since 1970 with a 14-0 season in 2002, defeating Miami in the Fiesta Bowl. The Jim Trussell era ended abruptly when he resigned in May of 2011 amid the NCAA investigation into improper benefit violations involving OSU football players during the 2010 season. The investigation resulted in Ohio State's self-vacating victories from the 2010 season, including the Sugar Bowl. Trussell finished his career at Ohio State with an official overall record of 94-22 and an 8-1 record against the team up north. His legacy is tarnished by the scandal that ended his tenure, but he's also respected by many fans and alumni for his achievements and character. He later became the president of Youngstown State University, where he had previously coached from 1986 to 2000, winning four Division I AA national championships. Urban Meyer was the head coach of Ohio State from 2012 to 2018, succeeding Luke Fickle. He led his team to an 83-9 record, including three Big Ten championships and four bowl wins. He also coached 12 first-team All-Americans, including Heisman Trophy finalist Dwayne Haskins and Blitnikoff Award winner Michael Thomas. Meyer was known for his spread offense, his recruiting dominance, and his success against the team up north and in the college football playoffs. He also led Ohio State to its first national championship since 2002 with a 14-1 season in 2014, defeating Alabama and Oregon in the inaugural college football playoff. The Urban Meyer era ended after a 13-1 season in 2018, which included a 62-39 win over the team up north and a 28-23 win over Washington in the Rose Bowl. Meyer retired from coaching due to health issues and became an assistant athletic director at Ohio State and a TV analyst for Fox Sports. He later came out of retirement to become the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2021, but was fired after a 2-11 season and being involved in several controversies. His legacy is controversial by the fact that he had some of the most talented teams in Ohio State history, but also faced criticisms for his handling of off-the-field issues involving his players and staff. Replacing Urban Meyer was Ryan Day. Day went on to play quarterback at New Hampshire University after being named the state's Gatorade Player of the Year senior year of high school. He played for then-offensive coordinator Chip Kelly, setting four New Hampshire career records. After his college playing career, he became a tight ends coach for his alma mater before spending time as a grad assistant at Boston College in Florida. He then became the wide receiver coach at Temple, followed by Boston College. In 2012, he was named the Temple Offensive Coordinator before joining Boston College as their OC and quarterback coach in 2013. In 2015, he joined his former mentor Chip Kelly in Philadelphia, serving as the Eagles quarterback coach and followed him to San Francisco in 2016. Following that season, he returned back to the college ranks, being named quarterback coach and co-offensive coordinator for the Buckeyes. After the 2017 season, Day was named the offensive coordinator and primary play caller for the Buckeyes after being linked to the Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator position. 
when Meyer was placed on administrative leave to start the 2018 season, Day was named the acting head coach, leading Ohio State to three wins. After Meyer decided to retire following the 2018 season, Day was named the full-time head coach. Gene Smith reportedly had a short list of at least three coaches, two college and one pro, in place if Ryan Day wasn't interested in taking over for his former boss. In Ryan Day's first season as head coach, he led the Buckeyes to a 12-0 regular season record and beat Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game 34-21. They would lose to Clemson in the college football playoffs in a controversial fashion. Day posted the final score of the Clemson game in the locker room going into the 2020 season, telling the press, you don't want to go back and replay the game last year. One of the issues was field goals and in the red zone, and not scoring touchdowns down there. It just didn't happen. And now we're going to have the opportunity to play them again. And this is the reason why everybody worked so hard during that offseason, was to get this opportunity. Now we got to make the best of it. In the shortened 2020 season, Ohio State went on to win the Big Ten and played Clemson in the college football playoffs for the second year in a row. This time they would get their revenge, beating the Tigers 49-28 to make it to the national title game where they would lose 52-24 to Alabama. During the 2021 season, Ohio State lost to Oregon early in the season, but then went on to win nine straight games, including wins over 20th ranked Penn State and 5th ranked Michigan State. Going into their final game with Michigan, the Buckeyes were ranked number two while the team up north was ranked number five. For the first time since 2011, the Buckeyes lost to the team up north, they would miss out on the Big Ten title game as well as the college football playoffs, beating Utah in the Rose Bowl 48-45 as they watched their rivals go on to win the Big Ten title and play in the college football playoffs. Ohio State went into the Michigan game undefeated this past season but would be embarrassed 45-23, making Day the first coach to lose multiple games to the team up north in the 21st century and making him 0-2 since selling the press the Buckeyes would hang 100 on the team up north. Ohio State still made the college football playoffs, but lost to eventual national champions Georgia 42-41 in the semifinal matchup. As head coach at Ohio State, Day is 45-6 going back to the three-game stint in 2018. He is also 31-2 in Big Ten Conference play, but his two losses are in games that really matter to the fan base. He has recruited at an unreal level compared to the rest of the Big Ten and has turned Ohio State into quarterback U. They has built a tradition at Ohio State at the quarterback position, with two of the last three being Heisman finalists and the others receiving first place votes. Every quarterback he has coached at Ohio State has gone on to be drafted in the first round of the NFL draft as well. Yet, there are some that believe Day may be on the hot seat going into this season. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Day this season, especially come the last game of the season when the Buckeyes travel to Ann Arbor. The last time Ohio State lost three straight games to the team up north was from 1995 to 1997. If they lose that game and don't win the Big Ten title this season, I think there will be a lot of people calling for his head. Cameron Teague Robinson from The Athletic wrote back in January, I think with the expectations of getting the Big Ten title back, the importance of a win against Michigan, and the way the defense ended the year, they will be put under the microscope. He does have a challenge ahead with the questions on defense, at quarterback, and along the offensive line. Still, there's talent all over Ohio State's roster, and it should be a preseason top 5 team. Next year is crucial for this program, and Day needs to make sure everything is tightened up. It's crazy to think that a coach who has led their team to three of the last four college football playoffs may be on the hot seat, but expectations are different at Ohio State. Winning games just don't cut it. You need to beat certain teams and win specific games at Ohio State like national titles and big time titles. Do I think Ryan Day is the head coach of Ohio State come the start of the 2024 season? Yes, I think he beats Michigan this year and gets things going again but they need to beat their rivals this season and win the Big Ten title. These are now all Ryan Day's players, and there are no excuses with the talent the Buckeyes have across their roster. But what do you think? Who will be Ohio State's coach next season? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.